Music is found in every known society, past and present, and is considered to be universal human. What if the music that developed in the Western world are as old as these fire mummies here in Benguet? Hi, dear learners! Join me as we unravel the music that started to flourish in Europe in 500 AD, while these Philippine treasures have also been created in the mountains of the Cordillera. I am Peter Jason, and you are watching Depot TV. Today, we go back to the time when the Western art music flourished in Europe. So be ready with your pen, paper, and self-learning modules as we describe the musical elements of selected vocal and instrumental music of the medieval, Renaissance, and Baroque music periods. The first period of Western art music is medieval period. Let's start with the medieval music. Medieval music was created and performed during the Middle Ages. This would include both music for the Christian church and non-religious music composed for entertainment purposes. Medieval music includes solely vocal music, such as the Gregorian chant and choral music, or music for a group of singers, solely instrumental music, and music that uses both voices and instruments. The Gregorian chant was sung by monks during Catholic Mass. The Mass is a reenactment of Christ's Last Supper intended to provide a spiritual connection between man and God. A neum was the basic element of the Western system of musical notation prior to the invention of the five-line staff notation. The earliest neums were symbols that indicated the general shape but not necessarily the exact notes or rhythms to be sung. The music, which was not bound by the Catholic traditions and which emerged during the latter part of the medieval period, was called secular music. The group of musicians, known as troubadours, performed these songs across Europe. Later on, these songs were called troubadour music. It is characterized as monophonic, sometimes with improvised accompaniment. Troubadour music, written in French language, talked about chivalry and courtly love. Many instruments used to perform medieval music still exist in the 21st century, but in different and technologically developed forms. One is flute. In the medieval era, the flute was made of wood rather than of silver or other metals and could be played as a side-blown or end-blown instrument. The second period of the Western art music is the Renaissance period. Renaissance came from the French word runet, which means rebirth, revival, and rediscover. The notable vocal music of Renaissance are mass and madrigal. On one hand, the Renaissance grandests, most highly valued works of vocal music, were polyphonic settings of the ordinary of the mass. The ordinary is composed of five texts, Kyrie, Gloria, Credo, Sanctus, and Agnus Dei. The characteristics of mass are polyphonic, may be sung a cappella or with orchestral accompaniment, and the text may be syllabic, nomadic, or melismatic. On the other hand, madrigal, which is a secular polyphonic composition originated from Italy, was written and expressed in a poetic text and sung during courtly social gatherings. It is the most important secular form during Renaissance period. The characteristics of the madrigal are polyphonic, sung in a cappella, through composed, and frequently in three to six voices. The organ, lute, viols, or other instruments accompanied, doubled, or substituted for voices, and organists developed a huge repertory of music 
for use in church services, including preludes, interludes, and arrangements of liturgical melodies. In secular music, the lute remained popular both for solos and ensembles. Clavier instruments were coming into wider use, and hundreds of pieces were written for chamber music ensembles. Next is Baroque music, a period of Western art music composed from approximately 1600 to 1750. The term Baroque came from the Italian word Barocco, which means pearl of irregular shape. Baroque music was elaborate and ornamented. Its new forms can be binary or ternary. It has many forms like the following. A concerto is an orchestral music that employs a solo instrument accompanied by an orchestra. Meanwhile, in a concerto grosso, the musical material is passed between a small group of soloists and full orchestra. A fugue is a contrapuntal compositional technique in two or more voices, built on a subject that is introduced at the beginning in imitation and which recurs frequently in the course of the composition. An oratorio is a musical piece that is usually lengthy and based on some biblical or religious event. It is a performance for voice and orchestra, but the story is told through the music and not with scenery, costumes, and action. A choral is a musical composition consisting of or resembling a harmonized version of a simple, stately hymn tune. Basing on what are presented about the musical forms of Baroque, it is noticeable that there are two stylistic tendencies that partially define the Baroque, an increased interest in the solo voice and a rise in the status of instruments and instrumental music. Because of these, we can say that Baroque is one of the richest and most diverse among the previous periods. There you have it, dear learners. For the assessment, your task is to rearrange the letters to get the words that we have talked about during our discussion. You only have five seconds to fix the jumbled letters. This is the first and longest era of Western art music from approximately the 5th to 15th century. If your answer is medieval, you are right. The second jumbled word is the monophonic plain chants started by Pope Gregory I. The correct answer is Gregorian chants. Fantastic! The third word came from the French word runet, which means rebirth, revival, and rediscover. The correct answer is Renaissance. Amazing! The fourth word was the prominent instrument used during the Renaissance period. Exactly! The answer is lute. The fifth jumbled word is a form of sacred musical composition that sets texts of the Eucharistic liturgy into music. Mass! That is the word we are looking for. Great! The sixth jumbled word came from an Italian word, barocco, which means pearl of irregular shape. You nailed it! It's Baroque! And for the last mystery word, it is an orchestral music that employs a solo instrument accompanied by an orchestra. You're right! Concerto is the answer! Job well done! Congratulations! 
Music is the most dazzling fruit of human civilization that became massive global craze today. Therefore, the next time you sing or hum songs like those that arise from Korean pop, original Pinoy music, rock or jazz, keep in mind that our new music reflects the characteristics of the Western art music we discussed today. Always remember that these songs are the byproduct of music that developed through the medieval, renaissance, and baroque periods. It was also in these times that these far mummies of Benguet in the Cordillera were also being created. Indeed, the formation of music, just like the creation of Benguet's far mummies, was influenced by culture, religion, experience, climate, and technology. Dear learners, see you again in our next episodes here in Deped TV. I am Peter Jason saying, if there is no music, there will never be a human soul because music is the language of the soul. Don't go away because Teacher Rafi will time travel you to the history of arts. Let the art astonishing journey begin. What's up, Art Smarts? All over the Philippines, Sir Rafi B is here and you're watching DepEd TV. Are you ready to get your hearts racing? Fasten your seatbelts and be ready with your paper, pen, and self-learning modules as we take the art astonishing journey here on Art Smart. Long before modern technology became part of our everyday lives, humans were already artists as manifested by the different archaeological discoveries across the globe. Today, we will discover distinct characteristics, elements, and principles of arts during the different periods across Western cultures. Before we go, I'd like you to meet our Art Smart BFF, Artsy B. Hello there! I'm Artsy B, your Art Smart BFF. I will guide you in taking the smart start and accomplish tasks that will prepare you for a yet art astonishing journey. Your first task today is to arrange the jumbled words that you might encounter along the way. I will give you 5 seconds for each item. Number 1 refers to arrangement and symmetry. Did you answer balance? You are right! Number 2 deals with the creation of a focal area in a work of art. The correct answer is emphasis. Number three involves decorating with planned and repeated units. If your answer is pattern, you are right. For the last jumbled word, this means all is in harmony and variety adds interest. It's unity! Great job, Art Smarts! Sir Rafi, back to you! Thank you, RTB, for that art amazing task. Now, for you to be guided with our art trip, here is our art itinerary. We are about to begin our virtual time travel to the history of the arts. But before that, let me share to you a brief timeline of Western classical art. The prehistoric and Egyptian eras produced ancient art from 1,500 BC to 2000 BC. The Greek and Roman eras created classical art from 2000 BC to 400 BC. The medieval period created different artistic styles such as the Byzantine, Romanesque, and Gothic from 400 BC to 1400 AD. Let us start our tour. And at the end of our virtual trip, you need to pass the smart up task that RTB will give you to unlock two symbols in our medallion. This medallion will serve as your key to the art amazing world of Western classical art traditions. Since you are now time travel ready, let the art astonishing journey begin. 
Welcome to the prehistoric era. In this period, paintings were found inside the caves and believed to be their way of communicating with each other. It may also be for religious or ceremonial purposes and more of an artifact of archaeological evidence than a true picture of humans' first created art. Their sculptures were believed to be a product or result of natural erosion and not of human artistry. Materials used in sculptures vary according to region and locality, while carving may have mythological or religious significance. Architecture from the early age developed a form based on megaliths or big rocks. Although these structures that survived from prehistory might not be what we normally think of as architecture, these buildings are still a wonder today through the mysteries of their meaning, intricacy, and ingenuity. Oh, there you are! Welcome to Ancient Egypt! The paintings of Ancient Egypt were believed to give importance to life after death and the preservation of the knowledge of the past. Most paintings were stylized, symbolic, and show a profile view of an animal or a person. The main colors used in this period were red, black, blue, gold, and green from mineral pigments that can withstand strong sunlight without fading. Their sculptures were believed to have symbolic elements such as forms, hieroglyphics, relative size, location, materials, color, actions, and gestures were widely used. Their tombs required the most extensive use of sculpture. This includes symbolism to represent their gods as composite human bodies. Most of the gods were shown larger than humans. Ancient Egyptian architecture were developed during the pre-dynastic period of 4000 BC. Characteristics of Egyptian architecture include thick and stable sloping walls with few openings, exterior and interior walls along with columns and piers were covered with hieroglyphics and pictorial frescoes with carvings painted in brilliant colors. Ornamentations were symbolic like the scarab or sacred beetle, the solar disk, the vulture, and common motifs such as palm leaves, lotus flowers, and papyrus plants. Temples were aligned with astronomically significant events using precise measurements like solstices and equinox. Welcome to Classical Greece! Paintings during this period were most commonly found in vases, panels, and tombs. They depicted natural figures with dynamic compositions and reveal a grasp of linear perspective and naturalistic representation. Most of the subjects were mythological figures, battles, and everyday scenes. The most common methods of Greek painting are fresco or water-based painting and encaustic or wax-based painting. Sculptures were tense and stiff and their bodies were hidden within enfolding robes or drapings during the early times. But it had finally evolved and showed all the points of human anatomy and proportion after three centuries of experiments. Their architecture showed temples consisting of central shrine or room in an aisle surrounded by rows and columns. These buildings were designed in one of the three architectural styles or orders, the Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. Now let's roam around Rome. Roman paintings were mostly copied or imitated from Hellenic Greek paintings. Roman paintings have a wide variety of subjects including animals, everyday life, still life, mythological subjects, portraits, and landscapes, which is the main innovation of Roman painting from Greek painting. Sculptures were made of monumental terracotta. They did not attempt to compete with the freestanding Greek works of history and mythology, but rather produced reliefs in the great Roman triumphal columns with continuous narrative reliefs around. Architectures from this era were sturdy stone structures, both to use and to perpetuate their glory. The emperors erected huge halls and arenas for public games, baths, and processions with gigantic arches of stones, bricks, and concrete or with barrel vaults. This time, let's visit the Byzantine Empire. Byzantine paintings were lively styles which had been invented in Greek and Rome, but this time for Christian subjects. By the 11th century, the Greek and Oriental styles seemed to blend together in splendid. Their sculptures were religious and taken from everyday life scenes and motifs from nature. Animals were used as symbols such as doves, 
deer, and peafowl, while some had acrostic signs that contained a great theological intent or significance. Architecture from this period had a lot in common with early Christian architecture, where mosaic decoration was perfected, as was the use of clerestory to bring light in from high windows. The Byzantine era's advancement in developing the dome created a new style in global architecture. Brace yourselves as we take a glimpse of the Romanesque style. Paintings during this time have a remarkable variety of artistry where mosaics on the walls of the churches follow a strict frontal pose with modeling and treatment of faces that follow Byzantine convention, while refreshingly decorative feeling came from southern French styles. It showed Mozarabic influence or Arabized influence through elongated oval faces, large staring and fierce eyes, long noses, figures against flat colored bands with heavy outlining. Their sculptures were pieces of reliquaries, altar frontals, crucifixes, and devotional images. Small individual works of art were generally made of costly materials for royal and aristocratic patrons. Lightweight devotional images were usually carried during processions both inside and outside the churches. Architecture from this period showed doorways of Romanist churches that were often grand sculpted door openings. Wood or metal doors were surrounded by elaborate stone sculptures arranged in zones to fit architectural elements. Castles were greatly outnumbered by churches. Romanist style in England was traditionally referred to as Norman architecture. And we are down to our last destination. Let us experience the artistry of the Gothic style. Gothic paintings have been confined to the illumination of manuscript pages and the paintings of frescoes on the walls of the churches that were of cosmopolitan style in elegant and sophisticated manner. The subjects of their paintings usually depicted popular legends and love stories with patterns like male floor or thousand flowers showed an influence which may have been due to the Crusades. Stained glass windows were created to transform the vast stone interiors with warm colors to instruct Christians in their faith. Its sculptures had a greater freedom of style. They no longer lay closely against the wall but began to project outward. Figures were given their own particular attitudes instead of being set into particular patterns, but were more lively and realistic at the same time. Architecture from this period included two new devices such as the pointed arch, which enabled builders to construct much higher ceiling vaults, and stone vaulting hold in a network of stone ribs which were supported by piers and clustered pillars. These elements together formed a structurally and aesthetically integrated system or style which made up the primary engineering innovation and design component of Gothic architecture. Hello Art Smarts! It was an artful visit from the past. Let's play Time Frame. I challenge you to identify the periods or styles that these sets of photos represent. Now it's time to smart up! Number 1. What do you think these photos represent? These works of art fall under Byzantine style. You are right! Number 2. What do you think these photos represent? You got it right! These amazing art pieces represent Egyptian era. Number 3. How about these photos? Correct! Gothic style! Now for the last set of pictures. Very good! These are representations of ancient Greek period. Congratulations, Art Smarts! You successfully unlocked two symbols in our medallion. I am so proud of you! Sir Rafi, back to you! Thank you, RTB, and great job, Art Smarts! It was a jam packed tour, right? I hope you took selfies while we were on tour. Share it on Facebook and use the hashtag ArtSmart and get the chance to be featured in our next episode. It's amazing to realize that these artworks have stood the test of time and that we have been given the opportunity to explore its wonders. May you use the lessons you have learned from our tour today and be inspired with the stories behind every art style. That's it for our art astonishing journey for now. This has been Sir Rafi B for DepEd TV. Let's keep on creating art. Be art smart.